What's up? Welcome to beautiful Newark, New Jersey. We're ready to depart for another adventure, and this time Jacqueline's coming with me. So, where are we going? Have you ever been, you know, like sitting at home or flying your paramotor maybe and thinking, how did this paramotor get made? Well, we're gonna answer that question. More specifically, the Parajet Maverick and the Parajet Line. If you guys remember, right about a year ago, we were down in Florida and I picked up that Parajet Maverick with the Atom 80 and it was kind of 50% for Jacqueline to fly because it's like the perfect paramotor for her and kind of 50% because I kind of wanted it because it's a sweet little paramotor. And I've been really loving it ever since. So the guys from Parajet invited us out to one, first go to the UK and tour their factory and see how paramotors are made there. And two, also to go to Spain and see their flight school academy and do some flying with them. So we're gonna have a bunch of different episodes from this adventure. It's gonna be exciting. We're also gonna have a day to ourselves to go- um, Eat macaroons. Yeah, in London. So it's gonna be awesome. Jacqueline, are you excited? I'm very excited. I've never been outside the US before. This is my first international trip. We both made the same face. But look at this fresh passport. It's never gone anywhere. I don't want to show you my picture. Yeah, don't show them. Well, join us for the adventure. Like I said, we're gonna have a bunch of different episodes, so make sure you're subscribed. And we're gonna see how parameters are made. We're gonna fly in Spain, and it's gonna be sick. We made it to the Parajet factory. Jacqueline, are you excited? I'm very excited, but I am slightly jet lagged. <laughs> slightly jet lagged, but we're making it through. We got some coffee in us, we're stoked. And the goal for today is I wanna show you guys basically how these paramotors are manufactured. It's kind of like a rare look into how they're actually created. Um, we got a little bit of a taste of it yesterday, and it's actually really impressive. Every single Parajet you see out in the wild has come from this little factory right here. Well, it's not quite little, it's actually pretty enormous. But the cool thing is seeing the whole assembly line, we're gonna show you guys all the steps involved basically of how a paramotor is manufactured from start to finish at this facility and then ends up at your door ready to go fly at home. Check it out, got my own freaking custom key and everything. This is uh, where you walk into first. This is basically like a showroom. And uh, just to give you guys a little idea, on my left here are Parajet Mavericks. These are the most popular of the parameters that come out of here at Parajet. But you also have the Zenith or Zenith and the Volution that are also manufactured here. Over here, you got a freaking meeting room. Very important business meetings go on here. This is one of the very first paramotors that kind of inspired the whole Parajet mission. Gylo actually started with that guy and kind of wanted to create his own paramotor, which became the Volution number one. And now they're on the third rendition. Got some mini baby paramotors over there. And this is actually really sick over here. If you guys have ever seen the whole Bear Grylls Mount Everest thing, this is one of two rotary supercharged, I believe, paramotors that flew up over Mount Everest, like 20 some thousand feet. So check it out. You go past the showroom, up the stairs, and now you're overlooking the entire production line. This is where the magic happens. Let's go down there and check it out. So we're down here kind of on the assembly line of the factory floor. I'm gonna do my very best to not domino a whole stack of paramotors and knock them down while we're filming. Cool thing is every single paramotor assembled here is pretty much completely custom. You have different harness sizes, different engine options, different color options, and everything is pretty much hand selected down here and assembled per order. And when you make an order, it's about one to two weeks lead time to get the package sent out, which is insane because if you're a new paramotor student, and you're kind of worried about, I just went through training, I need gear, you're not gonna miss a whole lot of flight time. One to two weeks is like a really fast turnaround time for a completely custom paramotor.
Okay, so we're back here in the very back of the whole factory. And this is kind of where the journey of the paramotor starts and finishes. Motors come in from Viterazzi right over here and the frame components come in pre-welded and ready to go. And they go through the whole assembly line, putting everything back together and they come back here to get shipped back out. We've got an enormous stack of cardboard boxes right there and a bunch of Mavericks ready to be boxed up. If you guys remember when I received my Pear Drip Maverick at a Matey combo about a year ago, one of the coolest things about like that first unboxing experience was how clean and simple it all was. It's kind of like unboxing an iPhone. It's like satisfying to take everything out and it's all shiny and ready to go. All you have to do is really put in a couple bolts and like your parameters ready to fly. So it's cool to see how that whole process gets to that user experience of opening the box for the first time. All right, so here we've got a whole bunch of Maverick frames paired up with their engines that will be paired together. Then they can basically go down this line here and pick all the components off the shelf that they need. You got different colored hoops. You've got all different size harnesses here, little springy bits, got bolts, carabiners, and then all kinds of custom color stuff. Now they have standard colors that you can choose um, for your colored anodized parts, or you can pick any color of the rainbow and they can basically make it happen. Super cool that you can customize your paramotor like that. One of the crazy things they were explaining is kind of the logistics behind all this. If they run out of washers, just washers, a tiny little small component, it basically halts the entire assembly line. So logistics behind all this stuff has to be super, super organized. And they do that digitally. So all of these paramotors have a digital print sheet here that tracks everything. And they explain that if a user happens to call and say maybe they got a defective part, they can trace it back to a batch and then make sure everything is cleared up and good to go. So it's a little bit loud in here, but just across the way is where they do all the CNCing and machining of parts. Here got some spars for the Zenith. And over here we have a ton of Maverick swing arms being CNC'd right on this machine behind me. Super cool stuff. So one of the cool design elements of the Maverick frame is the way that the swing arms attach to the paramotor frame. As opposed to using just a nut and bolt system, these arms are actually kind of trapped inside the frame so that you never have to worry about tightening a nut or the nut coming off or um, structural integrity because this design, the way it's made, is way more structurally sound than a nut and bolt. That's one thing I appreciate about the frame and yesterday I saw how they basically mill every single piece a little bit different for each paramotor. They attach a scale to the swing arm and kind of pull on it to make sure that everyone is set the same and once it comes out of the factory you as the user don't really have to worry about it everything's tightened to the right spec and she's good to go so also just across the way here in another shop we've got kind of a welding department we've got some welding for the Pearjet Volution as well as some of the trikes going on right over here All right, so you can see this line of paramotors here getting closer and closer to final assembly. Fuel tanks are installed, engines are installed, and it's about ready to come full circle all the way to the back of the factory. So before we come full circle, check out this thing. This is the Sky Car. It has a rotary engine in it, which powers both a giant propeller and the powertrain system as a buggy. And it's even got two little Maverick style fuel tanks in it. Jacqueline, would you fly the Sky Car? I'd fly the heck out of it. All right, so once the finishing touches are applied, everything's been test fitted, we come full circle. Back to here, gets boxed up. They've got this insane machine over here creates bubble wrap. Never even thought of that, but it's a thing and it's amazing. Then full circle, we get packaged up in the boxes, ready to be sent out to the happy customer. 
All right, so I think that should give you kind of a good idea of how these parameters are created start to finish. And just some concluding thoughts. I said in the past, one of the things I really value about a good paramotor is the fit and finish and the aesthetics of it. I like a paramotor that you can tell it's not something that was just created in some guy's back shed. And Pearjet is really a reflection of that. You can tell, obviously, everything here is top notch. Some people I see kind of, they'll see paramotors for the first time and they'll say, how are these things so expensive? Everything's built on such a detail-oriented, small production scale basis that it all makes sense. You know, you're buying something that's a very high quality product and I think it's extremely worth it in the end. So I wanna give a huge thank you to Pearjet for having us out. Everyone in the factory was super welcoming and it was clear that everyone had a passion for what they were doing. Stick around to see where our adventure takes us in Spain and I hope you guys enjoyed. We'll see you in the next episode. Till then, peace.